What's up everyone, Coach Dan Palacios here at Kinetic Training Off The Grid with another session of Kinetic Coaching. I have Coach Kate Hastings here. What are we gonna work on today? A bunch of different things. We're gonna work <laughs> through simulated stress, Yep. right? And you're gonna throw a bunch of different things at me while we're... Really just working on getting your heart rate up okay. and being able to see and feel the biomechanics of handling a firearm. We work a lot with police and law enforcement down here in the South Florida area. So what I'm working on is getting coaches like Coach Kate here to be able to train and apply that training to not only the biomechanics, but also the mental, the physical, and the simulated stress aspects of training for law enforcement. What people don't realize about law enforcement work is that when you're on the job, you're sitting in a car, you're going, going, going all the yeah. time, just on patrol, and then suddenly, boom, drop of the hat, you're in a very stressful, potentially you dangerous go. situation, yeah. you gotta go. You don't have time for a warm up, you don't have time to <laughs> think, think about, about it, what it is yeah. you're gonna do. You have to be able to make those calculations on the fly, and if you train properly for that, and you put yourself in that environment during your training on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, you're gonna perform a lot better when those situations arise, and you're gonna be able to stay a lot more calm which is a lot of what we're gonna go over. So make sure to check out Coach Kate Hastings here on Kinetic Training, Kinetic Coaching with our simulated stress training today. We're gonna to approach the firearm, position your hands, rack the slide, and find your target. Step over a little bit to your left. Okay, and remember, you can either pull back on the top of the slide or you can pull the tab, whichever one you prefer. Just don't engage the trigger with your finger until, yep, there you go. So what we're working on is placing the shot with the Mantis X laser on the target. There you go. Good. Re-rack. Nice. Again. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Give me three more. Two more. Very nice. One more. Very good. Rest. So go ahead, rack the slide. Slide the pin into the, the lock. So you wanna slide that up like that. There you go. And then place it down with the nozzle down range. There you go. All right. I don't hands. I yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so what did you feel there? I feel like I couldn't reach the trigger right. to pull it. So. Right. so a few key aspects of firearms work is number one, making sure you have the right firearm for you. Yeah. Now for a police officer, depending on what department you work for, you may be issued a firearm. So you'll have to get comfortable with working with what works best for you within what is standard issue for female officers, male officers, whatever that may be. Uh, you do need to be trained in utilizing the actual firearm you're going to be using on duty. What was some of the other stuff that you felt while you were pulling and trying to figure out what it felt like to actually get the trigger moving? Uh, just like you have to think about everything, your whole body. So like the mental aspect, the breathing, mm -hmm. focusing on the target. So it's like a full body experience, <laughs> experience yeah. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. shooting a gun, you know, and this is an empty gun. So right. I can only imagine when you're in a situation where somebody is either shooting at you or you're in some sort of right. emergency where you really have to be present and practice this type of training as well. Absolutely, important. absolutely. And that's part of the reason that we're working with a dry fire system, which allows you to just work the basic mechanics, understand the positions, understand where to place your eyes, where to get on target, and how to feel each shot. It actually does legitimately train the muscles of yeah, your hands and of your forearm. forearms. You're, don't be surprised if your forearm's <laughs> a little bit sore tomorrow just yeah. from pulling the trigger a few times. Uh, but. If we train that often enough, we can start to desensitize the body to that mm -hmm. part of the experience and it just becomes second nature to be Natural. able to do that when it's necessary. What's the difference between necessary force and excessive force 
that's a lot of what we want to learn here today. So let's get into some simulated stress work, get your heart rate up, we'll come back to the firearm and see how you do when you're tired. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is you're going to put one foot forward on the sand dune stepper there. All right, we're going to tax your balance a little bit, so step on top of the sand dune. And you're going to be soft on that back, all right, nice and easy, right? You want to feel all your load on the forefoot, the ball of the foot, the big toe of that right foot. You're going to see the ball, identify the color, call it out loud, and you can only catch with your right hand for right now, okay. all right? So how many colors are there? Only three colors, blue, <laughs> green, and red. Okay. Right? I thought that was yellow. Call the color, catch the ball with only your right hand. Ready? Here we go. Toss it to me. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Ready? Oh, no. Woo, now it's wet. Red. There you go. Soft hand. Red. There you go. Necessary vo force versus excessive force. Blue. All right, there you go. Green. There you go. There you go. Very good. Sorry. Left hand. Red. Woo! Woo. <laughs> Oop. Oop. Green. Blue. Green. Switch feet. Back to your right hand. Switch hands. Green. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Red. Blue. Green. Red. Blue. Good. Nice. Recover. <laughs> so we'll talk about that real fast. All right. So we're making the connection here between balance hand-eye coordination, cognitive vision training, right? Being able to see information, perceive it, and respond accordingly, right? In this case, pretty simple, call the color you see. There's only three options, really. But how did your body respond at first? Um, I threw the <laughs> ball really aggressively back. Like, right, right. I was like, just threw it just really aggressively. Uh, but then as my body started to understand the, what Mechanics I was actually it, yeah. doing, yeah, I was really present like really present in the motion and the movement, right. my whole body, my mind, body was completely connected. So. Right. And being able to settle into executing the drill and figuring out what's actually necessary. This is what we mean by excessive force versus necessary force, right? That first, re that triggered <laughs> reaction is, right? Where some other person might have, you know, uh, they just kind of dribble the ball at yeah. you, right? So it really does help you tune into how your body responds to different types of stimulus. Maybe yeah. it's not incredibly stressful, maybe it's actually kind of exciting, uh -huh. but what do you actually do when the time comes to execute that drill? So now we'll start to add other parameters to it. We get your heart rate up, see if you can identify as well, see if you can stay as balanced, and then we'll come back to the firearm after okay. we get the heart rate up a little cool. bit. Cool, that's good. Uh, yeah, we'll it. So all I want you to do, all right, is hold it dead center, elbows up, get on your toes. In my sternum or both? Just outside your sternum, yeah. You're not going to quite press it in, but I want you to feel that forward pressure, right? You're going to steer it to your right side, get your left side long, look at your target, because that's now your new target, right? Okay, and I want you to feel that right hip drive up. So get on your right toe, drive into the target, and then steer it to the left side, right? Feel that left oblique. Feel that left lat, feel them driving up through the bar. Steer it again, All right? Steer it left. Steer it right. Now do it a little faster, so a little bit more snap. There you go, snap. Drive up through that right side, so it's gonna be here. Boom, there you go, opposite. So bend that, boom, fire it. Opposite knee, so bend that knee. There you go, now opposite. Ready, go, boom. Steer it, hit that landmark. Elbow, hip. Left side, elbow into hip, hit the landmark. Boom, hit. 
feel the glute, feel the oblique. Again, right? And feel what that would do to translate over to somewhere up. And and hold. Now, from there, step your right foot back further, so it's going to be a split stance. Okay. From there, you're going to press up on the left, step forward with your right. So you're going to punch that left hand towards me. Like this? Yep. So. Boom. Exactly. Now bring it right back down to that same position. Back to the split? Yep. Coil to your side. Drive up through your left, step up to your right. Good. Bring it down. Now with some power. Boom. That's it. Nice. So three. Always keep a visual target, right? Eyes on target. Visual kind of target is absolutely critical for knowing where the heck they're going. Okay. Right? And what, what it is they plan on doing next, right? Go to your right side now. Switch my so stance. Coil to your right side. Yep. Switch your stance. Eyes on target. Press with your right. Step with your left. There you go. Once you start to get comfortable with it, then get more aggressive with it. Nice. And if you've done any kind of Olympic lifting, this should yeah. feel pretty similar, right? There you go. Steer it right, hit that right side landmark, boom. Nice. Do you want my hand here? Whatever feels comfortable for you as far as hand positioning is concerned. Excellent. One more on that side. Good, nice. All right, good, and bring it down. So you can see there, right, this is a pretty light weight yeah. for you, I'm sure, right? But, but it's hard. I mean, as far like as going slow, feeling the mechanics of that contraction, do. and then applying speed and power, it's a lot to think about. Will you be able to do that when your heart rate's up, when we're going back through everything again for the second round, yeah. um, and be able to apply those principles without me getting so involved in the process of like coaching it? Will you be able to retain that information and then apply it? That's what we're going to be looking for. So let's hit the next thing. Your stance, just get a feel for the wave at first, or just get it moving side to side. All right? Don't let it pull you off balance. There you go. That's a good, comfortable pace right there. Switch feet. So that's an added layer of difficulty, intensity, right? Switch feet. Keep the rhythm. Now focus on your breathing, right? Can you keep that rhythm and breathe smooth? Put a little bit more torque on it, right? Harder, harder pulls. There you go. Switch feet. Focus on that nasal breathing. Identify the color. Switch feet. Switch feet. Switch feet. Switch. Rest. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I wanted to switch when you did say switch. Right, right, right. You know. So, Will, uh, that's a huge aspect of simulated stress, right? Is that once stress has been introduced to the system, executive function starts to go out the window, yeah. right? We're no longer thinking logically, we're, we're just, just thinking, like, yeah, just dude, yeah, there's a lot going on, I gotta manage all of this, right? Uh, and that's a huge aspect of what comes into play when you're dealing with an arrest type situation. Maybe it's not a particularly dangerous arrest situation, but it is stressful. Cars, cars, people are around, right? The, the girlfriend, seat. the girlfriend yeah. is talking, or a significant other, whoever, right? Uh, all of those things come into play, yeah. and that can that can affect just the process of reading the Miranda rights properly, which yeah. can then affect the legal rights exactly. uh, later on, the, the legalities and the legal process later on. So, being able to manage all of those variables, right? Will you be able to see it, identify it, react, and execute when the time comes? This is a really good way to build some of that into the daily training. So let's go back to the firearm now while your heart rate's right. still up a little bit. And we're gonna hit that one more time, then we'll come back to all of this and we'll do a rapid fire round. Yeah. All right? If you, if you sort of think of training as a process of inducing sort of controlled micro trauma, yeah. it's basically <laughs> like a process of controlled torture, right? 
What are you doing to intentionally induce stress in your system, whether that's tissue breakdown from like slow controlled strength training or really? fast explosive yeah. Olympic lifting? That becomes easy to deal with. How do we, it. yeah, right, you expect it. Same thing, the same thing police officers go through when they are uh, doing all the necessary training to know what they have to do on the job, yeah. right? Whether that's just sticking to a certain protocol or actually being able to arrest someone, right? Someone who's running away versus someone who's being compliant. Those are all things that they have to learn how to manage. And if the training isn't there, it might not come out the right way. Like a reaction. That, yeah. You know, you yeah. See these cops have these really these reactions that may not be conducive with the actual right. environment, and then you do. And and who would anyone be to judge them? Yeah. When they don't even train that way themselves, exactly. right? Exactly. So they're just thrown to the wolves and not yeah. even. You know, right. You know. So let's engage the firearm. We're gonna we're gonna engage okay. the firearm first. All right. Rack the slide. Get on target. Get an athletic stance. All you. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five more. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Rest. So, here's a, a key, a key uh, little trick that I just played on you, and that was on purpose. I said five more, and I didn't change the tone of my voice when I counted to ten. I said five more at five, right? So in your brain. You didn't hear that you could stop at 10. Your brain went, keep shooting, keep shooting. So what did I do? Shooting. You shot an 11th shot. Oh, really right. Know. So again, executive function. You're zoned in on what you're doing yeah, here. Exactly. Will you be able to process an auditory call, right? Your partner is there making some kind of a call saying this or that about whatever's going on at the scene. Will you process that information? In this particular case, you didn't. I made you aware of it now so you would know to look for it. Yeah. But in that case, at the fifth shot, I called five more. And then when I counted the 10th shot, I counted it as if you were continuing on, right? The change in my voice inflection and the number processing just weren't there. So you kept shooting, <laughs> right? So this is how people end up riddled full of bullet holes. <laughs> Better. So let's go ahead and hit it with the landmine there. I'm going to give you limited instruction. Hit your right side landmark. Yep, that was correct. Make sure you're coiled into the right side. Yep, eyes on target. Right foot forward. Step and press. Good. Eyes on target. Eyes on target. There you go. Switch sides. Left foot forward, left side landmark, hit that left side coil, hard press. Let's get aggressive with it now. Bring me some power. Eyes on target. There you go. Last one. Recover. Good. Set that down. We're going to go right over to the sand dune stepper with the ball. One foot forward, catching with the right hand. Identify the color. Switch hands. Green. Red. Green. Red. Red. Switch feet. Switch hands. Green. Green. Red. Blue. Switch hands. Blue. Red. Blue. And recover, right? On the inertia wave, grab the inertia wave bands. So those two handles are at the back. Uh-huh. Start the way, hold them together as one band, yep. What kind of stance are you supposed to be in? There we go. <laughs> there you go. Switch feet. Identify the color. Blue. 
Switch feet. Switch. 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 Rest. Nice. Good, good, good. Right back to the firearm. Heart rate's up. Let's jog it over there. You have 10 shots. Make it happen. I'm not telling you anything this time. Okay. See what you got. Nice, you got it. Very good, very good. Being able to understand the needs of this particular population and all that goes into what they do you know, has a lot to do with how you're gonna program, right? And what kind of uh, broad spectrum of exercises did you see we did, right? Yeah, total body, like mind, right. eyesight, movement, right. I mean. In how many exercises though? Yeah, uh, how many did we actually yeah, do? Yeah. One, two, three. That's it, that's it. right? Yeah. That's so what we did was we built complexity into within, simplicity, yeah. right? Right. Good complexity within simplicity. We don't need a billion exercises. We don't even really need a billion modalities. There's simpler ways to do these things. These are just a good way of emphasizing the feedback that comes from having the breath belt on and what that mm -hmm. creates to tax your breathing system. How hard is it to breathe? Yeah, Once the heart rate's pressure, up, can you yeah. expand your diaphragm correctly? and can you feel the ability to breathe, mm -hmm. right? The landmine system, allowing you to feel that full body power and strength, yeah. feeling true resistance, Simil similar concept with the inertia wave, but a much more constant undulating coordination driven movement, yeah. right? You got more coordinated in the third round than you were in the first yes. round. You were able to identify perfectly all the colors that you saw, despite me giving you more frequent switch calls, and you were sharper on your shots, sharper on your shot count, by the third round. So there's another aspect to this that involves recovery and the ability to actually perform at a high level even though you're more taxed. You should be more tired by all accounts at the end of this workout uh, or that at the end of this round. You should be a little bit more out of sorts, but in this case, you're able to recover, you're able to respond, you're able to do it rapidly, rapidly, and you're able to execute at a high level. The more you repeat that process, the more likely it is your body will respond efficiently, effectively, with a sort of mentality of survivabil survivability and lethality, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't always want to be lethal, but if we need to, you have we might have yeah. to, right? But we also, also, we also need to know what is required to be lethal, right? Uh, understand, to, yeah, yeah, understand what that maximum threshold is. If you don't know what that feels like, then you may get there without realizing it, exactly. right? And what does it mean to actually serve and protect someone who may or may not have your best interest in mind? Yeah. There's the competitive fighting world, and yeah. then there's what it would actually look like to Defend execute yeah. jujitsu yeah. on you know <laughs> on someone who has a knife, yeah, or someone who has a gun, right? Is that going to be the most effective tool for that situation? It may actually be distraction, mm -hmm. right, and just situational awareness, yeah. de-escalation. Those are all bits and pieces of that puzzle that a good law enforcement officer needs to understand. Right? How do I get this person to calm down before they get yeah, to that to level, get that level or, yeah. um, or restrain them before it becomes a lethal situation without maiming them exactly. <laughs> right, in the process? Uh, those are all considerations that we have. So all that being said, all the different stuff that we worked on today, how do you feel? I feel great. I feel it's like everything was worked within my system, my nervous system, my you know, my, my thought process, my cognitive, like it was actually really enlightening to do this type of workout. And right. I, I, I could see this applying to everyday life and especially the police force or anybody in service. That right, right. 
just not as just much. Not just about getting strong and lifting weight and right. doing reps. It's like you need to know all of this. And I think as a human being, we need to know this. Absolutely, absolutely. And and those are all aspects of a good program that you want to be able to build into it. You can build strength on a landmine, power, explosiveness, mm -hmm. right? The ability to control external yeah. force. But you can work metabolic resistance mm -hmm. with the inertia waves. You can do that with any other, any other number of different types of tools that are all gonna layer in simply, efficiently, effectively with a certain level of complexity that allows the body to respond when the time comes. If all we ever do is the same type of training all the time, that's all we're gonna really be yeah. ready for. So that's what it is we're trying to achieve here is give average people just as much law enforcement officers the opportunity and the tools they need to apply these methods consistently efficiently effectively whether they're on the job whether they're at home whether they're you know at the office or on vacation these are all things that we can very easily build into our training programs as coaches and i think it'll make better humans overall across the board like you said i think so too and just you know just being aware of your surroundings and being this is really mindful training yeah you know it's like Mindful, and that's yeah. what we're losing a lot of, is like our mindfulness and our awareness of ourselves in situations that were, you know, at a gas station or anything like that, it could really come into play with this type of training, so. Yeah, for sure. So, everyone, thanks so much for watching Kinetic Coaching here with Coach Kate Hastings. So I'm gonna make sure you have her Instagram information available. If you're in the area and you wanna learn uh, some of the, the different techniques and modalities we applied today, I'm gonna be working with Coach Kate to make sure she has all of that at her disposal within the neck of the woods that she's training in, particularly for military and law enforcement from the South Florida area. So make sure to check her out. I'm gonna drop all of her information there. We'll see you next time, y'all. Live kinetically. Thank you.